Hi, I'm Hana Q, and a few months ago, I accidentally uncovered the unusual lore of Ibis Paint. If you're unaware, Ibis Paint has an unofficial mascot named Kiritama Ningenkun, who is a spiteful mochi man looking to claim his rightful place at Ibis Paint after being underestimated for his unattractiveness. To top it off, he is canonically a womanizer, a mole man, and a cannibal. I ran into him unwittingly whilst watching Ibis paint tutorials, and he has become the bane of my existence since. After he infiltrated Ibis paint headquarters and no more videos about him anywhere, I came to the conclusion that Shiratama's story would be an untouched mystery I wouldn't solve. I closed the book on Shiratama's story and returned back to my normal artist life. But ever since then, there's been a... Shiratama shaped hole in my heart. Whenever I would open up Ibis Paint, I would wonder what would Shiratama do if he were in this position? Now, there was no way of knowing how his story could unfold, but I realized that, hey, I'm an artist. And the magical thing about being an artist is that I could just come up with my own original unhinged story right here on Ibis Paint. With a whole new world and journey, I could create a world that Shiratama could crash his head right through. Luckily, I already had an original story that Shiratama could venture into. And for some added fun, let's make an illustration to accompany the story too. So let's get started. The following is an abridged telling of my solar system story and is meant to be taken as a just-for-fun, non-serious experience. Imagine a universe where all the planets of our solar system are ruled by powerful beings called celestials. Their power and size corresponds with their planet's sizes, so you can look up at them and be like, Mommy? Sorry. Celestials and humans live amongst each other and each planet has their own way of ruling and living with humans. Our story starts on the planet of Saturn, which is ruled by two giant celestial sisters. Queen Lithia, who rules over the land and loves humans in a they're like cute little pets kind of way. And her neglected sister Cilia, who rules over the skies, thunder, and tornadoes, but hates humans and thinks they're stinky. And she kind of accidentally eats them from time to time. Lithia gets mad at this and is like, Um, dude, can you not eat my humans? Lithia kicks her out to the wild inner core of Saturn that's full of hurricanes and storms. Cilia is really, really sad slash mad about it. And throws a rampage of storms and thunder until she comes across a random capsule. Inside is a tiny alien girl named Citrina whose hair is made of crystals like, ooh, shiny, and pries her out. She decides she wants to present her to Lithia as an apology for her oopsie human eating scenario. Citrina has no recollection of her memories and how she got there except for her name. But luckily, Lithia likes the gift. Lithia allows Celia back into her court just as long as she promises not to accidentally eat any more humans. And she makes feral sounds in agreement. Now, the reason why Lithia accepts Citrina is because she knows about Citrina's past. Lithia doesn't tell her, of course, because she has her own plans. Instead, she introduces Citrina to Enceladus, a celestial moon aristocrat of her Saturn court. Enceladus has a special moon eye thing that can foresee slightly into the future, but for some reason, she can't see into Citrina's future. So instead, Lithia instructs Enceladus to keep an eye on Citrina in case anything changes. And in the meantime, Enceladus teaches her etiquette and where and how the heck this world works. And so begins our two girlies' friendship. Aw, they were such good roommates. Let's get started on some sketching as we continue diving deeper into Citrina and Enceladus' relationship. First things first, I create a new canvas with a size of 2000 pixels by 2500 pixels. Now it's time to sketch, but oh, I can't forget to watch my daily ad before I can use my brushes. And I get an ad about poop. Very nice. This time, I'm going to use my pen fade brush. I start off sketching very general shapes just to place everything down. So the characters I'm drawing this time are my original characters Citrina and Enceladus. I realized that if you're new to the channel, you might not know too much about them. A while back, I followed a TikTok art challenge, and based on that, I came up with a design for Citrina. But I fell in love with her too much 
much for her to be a one-off character, so I did what any totally sane person would do and gave her a bunch of trauma, I mean lore, of being a crystal alien that was being hunted for her crystals. Once I've got my base sketched down, I create new layers to draw a cleaner sketch on top, focusing on adding details like their face, hair, and clothes. I'm drawing Citrina and Enceladus mid-dance with their hands and eyes interlocked with each other. Later, I went with the same concept as the TikTok art challenge and decided to ask my viewers to drop a bunch of random design ideas for another character to pair with Citrina. I picked out 20 comments to put into this one character and came up with Enceladus. She is named after Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons, but I like to call her NC for short. All of Saturn's moons are ruled by lower ranking celestials with their names corresponding to the moons. They are all a part of Saturn's court and are like each other's family. However, they're all toxic to each other due to being power thirsty and wanting favors from Queen Lithia. NC is a victim to this toxic dynamic and is ranked sixth amongst her siblings, though she seeks more power over the other Saturn moons. So when she finds a chance through Citrina, she <laughs> takes it. And with that, our sketch is finished. How will NC and Citrina's relationship develop? Will there be friendship or perhaps something more? But before we explore their relationship, you know what else has love in space? That's right, Love in Deep Space, a 3D dating sim where you can experience adventure, danger, and even love deep within the universe. In this immersive game, you can customize your character's appearance, interact with your love interest, and enjoy quality art and stories. And now, in the newly introduced Glint photo booth, you can even take pictures with your 3D boyfriend. Clearly, I'm going to need lots of experience with this dating in space gig, so I'm gonna explore my options. Okay, maybe too much exploring here. Now's the perfect time to play Love in Deep Space because the new August event, Misty Invasion, is here. Enjoy a new all-character event with event stories and an exclusive shop that has outfits, discounts, and accessories. Dive into the new all-character banner with 5-star interactive memories, a new game mode, Bounce Bounce Planet, an adventure plan to unlock event stories, festivals, and even more fun rewards. 24-7 daily companionship means I, I mean you, can immerse yourself in an engaging, personalized, story. So, if you're ready to give in to your 3D boyfriend, then download the game using my link in the description. Traversing deep space and be with you. And now, back to the video. We return back to our Saturn girlies and NC shows Citrina around Saturn. They are mostly these Greek-esque buildings perched on giant mountains built by Lithia because most of Saturn is literally inhabitable and dangerous storms. <laughs> Then, Citrina gets a massive migraine and recalls some of her memories. In them, she sees Queen Lithia literally conjuring up giant mountains, and Citrina yells, Stop! Don't do this! Lithia is like, watch me, and does it anyway, and Citrina starts to get hurt. Citrina wakes up and starts to feel distrustful and scared, and tells Ensi about her memories. NC is like, hmm, that's weird. She escorts Citrina away to her room and sneaks out to a grand library and to the back forbidden section. There she finds ancient texts alluding to an incredibly strong and old celestial power stemming from crystals that reminds her of Citrina. She decides to keep this information to herself, hoping to use it over her other aristocratic brothers and sisters later. <laughs> She begins to scheme how she can get Citrina to unlock and utilize this power to rise in ranks. In the meantime, they find out it is Saturn's turn to host the annual ball for all the planets, and all the people who are important are going to attend. Queen Lithia wants Citrina to attend, so NC is instructed to teach Citrina how to hold herself at the ball and how to dance. They get into cute shenanigans and get closer and very woo with each other. Legends say they were very good friends after all. No, Citrina starts to become enamored by NC with no idea at all that she plans to use her. As her emotions grow, she is able to utilize a bit more of her power and can conjure small crystals. NC's plans start to develop as she realizes she can manipulate Citrina's powers by playing with her emotions. Oh, I <laughs> But while she tries to be an all-toxic, manipulative GF, she accidentally starts to genuinely care for Citrina. 
All right, as we take time to digest our doomed GFs, let's get into some line art. So this time around, I'm using that same pen fade brush for my line art as well. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to draw a scene of the two of them sharing a dance at the ball. I designed new outfits for them, contrasting them by having Satrina in a flowy white dress and NC in a fitted black ensemble. While I'm working on the line art, I focus on capturing the tension between them, sparks in their eyes. Satrina, who is memoryless and naive, is completely captivated, and NC, who believes all the cards are in her hands, is full of confidence. Mid-dance, Satrina's hair is flowing, with NC leading. NC and Satrina become close. Through their dance, NC starts to doubt her plans of using Satrina to her advantage and debates telling her the truth of everything. But she fears Satrina will mistrust her and ruin what they have. Instead, NC locks away her feelings to continue her plans, to keep Satrina at arm's reach but never allowing herself to get any closer to her. I like to line the drawing in layers so I can easily change things if needed either by redrawing or using liquify. And now, the liner is finished. Let's proceed and see how their story unfolds. After their huge training arc of dancing, etiquette, and other very good roommate-related activities, the girlies are ready. The day of the ball comes and it's full of glamour. And before everyone can party, Queen Lithia says she has an announcement. She introduces Satrina and is like, Our celestial mother has returned! Satrina is confused, but everyone stares at her and the crystals in her hair in awe and whisper amongst each other. Lithia closes in and whispers to Satrina, This time, you will be my puppet on display. Satrina has no idea what her plans are, but she is ushered into the ballroom. The dance begins and she starts her dance with NC. Her uneasiness melts away in the arms of the one person she trusts and has been taking care of her. But she has no idea NC is feeling uneasy with plans to use her and her growing power. They dance more and NC spins her around, but she starts to spin off in the wrong direction. But mid-spin, she is caught in the arms of a mysterious man with a mask. He begins to dance with her and Satrina is like, who are you? He's like, I'm actually the Prince of Uranus. He then takes off his mask and, oh my god, it's Shiratama Ningen, the Prince of Uranus. He gives her a wink and tells her to keep it a secret. They dance more and he closes in and tells her that she is not safe here and she must escape. Shiratama tells her that the Saturn court is power hungry and soon Ensi will betray her. She's like, what? What? Why would I trust you? He gives her a special gem and tells her when the time comes, she'll need this. And he disappears. <laughs> Oh no! What is going on? Well, before we can get to that, we gotta get moving on this illustration. I'm now going to start adding the base colors. I'm making a few changes to the outfits like adding Ensi's moon in her hair bud and giving her a blue gem necktie. My colors are always organized in a bunch of folders and layers and it genuinely looks crazy. But this is what works for me and helps me keep things organized and I'm able to make changes easily. Obviously, the Prince of Uranus being Shiratama is a joke because as of now, I haven't revealed a design or name for the Prince of Uranus. <laughs> I can't tell you guys too much about him to avoid spoilers for the next episode in the solar system design series, but as of currently, his father is the current king of Uranus and he doesn't agree with how his father rules. So in rebellion, he has run away to build his own army and overtake his father's crown. One new technique I'm going to do this time around is brushing across some gradients to my base colors. Doing this will add easy dimension to the colors. Since there will be intense lighting coming from the top, the light will likely bounce from the floor and hit them from the bottom. I'm having the gradients be darker near the top and lighter towards the bottom to indicate this. Later, we'll add the hard rim light to the top. Now, let's see how our story will conclude. After the ball, Satrina goes to NC and tells her everything. NC tells her it will be all right and leaves. When she comes back, she has arrived with guards to lock Satrina up in a jail. Satrina is like, but why? I thought we were friends. 
And C is like, nah, I was only pretending to be your friend so I can use your special celestial powers, but now I don't have to pretend anymore and keep you in this jail instead and use you when I need. And C leaves, ready to inform Queen Lithia of everything. Satrina is so heartbroken and angry that all her emotions start bursting and she releases a super epic celestial power. Tons of crystals break the entire jail open and NC tells the guards to restrain her. Just then, Shiratama and a band of masked people swoop in to break Satrina out of jail. They run off on space motorcycles and Saturn releases a solar system-wide bounty for Satrina. Turns out, Shiratama is part of a group of rebellions and vagabonds who are joining him in a plan to eventually overthrow his tyrannical father, King of Uranus, and save his people. Satrina is still heartbroken and not sure who to trust. She realizes that she is too weak on her own right now, and that she must get stronger and more knowledgeable to stand on her own two feet. She gains a motive to figure out the truth of who she is and what her memories mean. In the meantime, the other group members of Shiratama's gang introduce themselves and decide to help her train. They learn that her conjuring powers can make weapons like swords and bows, so she begins training on different weapons. Thus begins her journey of traveling through the solar system, escaping her pursuers, fighting people who want to harvest her, discovering remnants of her past, and getting involved in incoming war. Join us next time to see how Shiratama takes down his father, King of Your Anus. And now, my fellow space travelers, it is time to start shading our piece. I always like to start with coloring the skin because it's my comfort zone, because every person I've drawn usually has skin, so it's consistent. I use a combination of lasso selecting an area and airbrushing in the shading to create that hard to soft coloring on the skin. If more blending is needed, I'll blur it out more. In this first round of shading, I focus on shading the characters in their local colors with emphasis on texture of clothing, hair, and other materials. Later, I'll add the lighting. For Satrina's hair, I add geometric shapes and keep my shading rather blocky to indicate its crystal-like nature. So tons of triangles, squares, and pentagons. It's time for the lighting. For this first part shown in time-lapse, I added a multiply layer on top of all the colors and filled it in with a gray-yellow shade. Then I made an add layer on top to carve out the areas where I want the light to hit. I'll just continue adding new layers and repeating these concepts. Once my first round of lighting is added, I'll continue coloring on top to add depth to the lighting and add extra shinies to Citrina's hair. In the background, I add a glow behind them to separate them from the background. Continuing with the background, I wanted to have a planetarium theme behind them with floating rings and planets about. A strong golden light will be hitting them from the left. From here on, it's just messing around with special effects like using the Ibis Paint sparkling brushes and adding effects on top. I mess around with tons of things like materials, brushes, and effects like color balance, texture, and more. So where next will Citrina's story unfold? Will she escape the Saturn pursuers and Queen Lithia's wrath? How will she fare with this new group of rebels? Can she become strong enough before the incoming war on Uranus? Can she trust the Prince of Uranus, or will she risk being betrayed again? What will she uncover about the truth of her past? What happens if she doesn't like what she learns? Will she be able to reunite with NC? And if she does, what will she say? Will they fight or make up? Who knows? But for now, we've just about completed our piece. Perhaps we will uncover more. Until then, please enjoy the final reveal of the piece.
Wait, what are you still doing here, silly? <laughs> so, yes, obviously this was all a little joke, but also a fun way to share my original character stories with y'all that you guys actually helped write. Today's video is a little different. I wanted to try a little bit of a fun and silly storytelling format, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm not sure if I'm ready to let go of my intrigue for Shiratama, but I'll certainly be trying out more Ibis paint-related features and tutorials in the future. I've got a few more projects I'm working on, including my current VTuber and a new VTuber project, the next episode of the Solar System, designs and more to come. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy all of the lovely fan art made by the community. I appreciate you all so much and I'm always happy to indulge in your gorgeous, gorgeous artworks. Until next time, I'm wishing you all the best on your journeys of achieving your goals and dreams. Bye!